Good morning, folks. Phil Gallagher of Thraben U here with an absolutely sick donation decklist. So a lot of times I get donation decklists and I go, yeah, I can play that. I've seen that before. And this time I got the decklist and I was like, ho, 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 ho. And the spiceometer went off. So today we are playing with Ali, Ali, question mark, F's Solemnity Lands decklist. So Solemnity says that players can't get counters, and that counters can't be put on artifacts, creatures, enchantments, or lands. Hmm. So if we have a Solemnity in play, and then we play a Dark Depths, we just instantly get the Merit Lodge. <laughs> Sleep is for the week! Or the people who have to work tomorrow. Uh, Tablocky, thank you very much for your Prime, uh, and... Egg the Goblin, thank you very much for your support. I do appreciate it. All right, so the cool thing here is that we have a lot of redundancy. So the traditional combo is Thespian Stage copying Dark Depths to make Merit Lodge. But we also have Solemnity plus Dark Depths to make Merit Lodge. We have Enlightened Tutor to tutor up Solemnity, and then we have both Crop Rotation and Elvish Reclaimer in order to go and tutor up Dark Depths, or sometimes Thespian Stage. Oh, it's just, eh, oh, okay, I gotcha. Eh, the Goblin. It's like what happens when Muxus comes into play. It's like, ah, uh, the Goblin, and then you die. <clears throat> so the cool thing about playing Enlightened Tutor is that at relatively low cost, you can add a few other enchantments to your deck. And so the ones that we have here in sort of our flex slots are Crucible Worlds as Honorary Life from the Loam number 5, and then a Leyline of Sanctity. Now, the Leyline of Sanctity may seem weird at a glance, but let's think. What is the most common way to make someone destroy their Merit Lodge? And the answer is a targeted edict, right? So, if that's the case... Having access to Leyline of Sanctity just shuts that down. And it is going to occasionally shut down some combo decks and do things of that nature as well. You know, get paired against something weird like Burn and aha, we're, we're, we're doing just fine. And it can also do some work against something like a Tendrils of Agony. Uh, this is something I was chatting about before I started recording, but for the YouTube folks, this is a little bit less of a control deck than traditional lands. If you take a look at what we're working with here, we have Tutor, we have Tutor, we have Tutor, and then most of the rest of the stuff is just the supporting cast for the combo. So this is a little bit different from Normal Lands. Normal Lands often plays like a control deck, oftentimes, you know, really going hard on your, your mana, destroying your threats via repeatable things like Cabal Pit or Punishing Fire. And with this deck, we're really looking to make a Merit Lodge quickly and consistently. That's what we're trying to do. The sideboard is going to shore up a lot of Game 1 weaknesses. Uh, very notably, there's a lot of stuff for combo here. You see Chalice of the Void, Sphere of Resistance, an Ancient Tomb to power them out, a bunch of Graveyard Hate. And beyond that, we have a handful of really neat enchantments to work with the Enlightened Tutor package. Choke can be really strong against the various blue mid-range and control decks. And we have Stony Silence, uh, which can really destroy some of those Urza Echo type decks and also put uh, a hurt on something like Death and Taxes. You wanted to get a Plains in there, but didn't know where to put it. Yeah, I understand completely. Uh, I, I mean, there's like 30 lands in this deck list, but they all serve an important function. Um... If I were to guess, I'd say Maze of Ith number two might be expendable, but like that card is very good at stopping you from dying against Delver. All right, YouTube folks, please consider throwing me a, a like and a comment as you watch this video. That sort of thing really helps my analytics, and the channel has been doing really well recently. So let's keep up that stream and that stream. Let's keep up that steam and get lots of eyes on my content so people can enjoy Legacy. Let's battle. Okay, um, 
opening hand is kind of medium minus. I have Crucible Ghost Quarter, which is eh. I have no way to make a Merit Lodge. I have one redraw off Tranquil Thicket, if I'm willing to take that. I think I can do better on six, but it's not like this hand is bad. I only have three Dark Depths to naturally draw. I do have a bunch of tutors. I'm going to keep this. Until, until I know, like, until I get a feel for how this deck plays out, probably important for me to just keep a couple of hands that are slightly questionable and get that feel for how they play out. My opponent, my opponent has mulligan to five, so if we're playing against a combo deck, that's not great for me. Oh yeah, uh, we, we need to like ring the metaphorical bell if we get uh, paired against Infect and resolve a Solemnity. And then like die to a Berserk Noble Hierarch instead. <laughs> Merfolk. Okay, I just need to set myself up for life from the loam. I can dredge that and then find my dark depths at least somewhat quickly. Hello, hello, Merit Lodge. <clears throat> what land am I playing? Probably just Port. And I just need to resolve Solemnity and then resolve Crop Rotation. How do I do that best? Probably by giving my opponent things. Oh, they were just F6'd. Okay. So notably, I could have considered a slightly different line. Okay, well, <laughs> we can stop talking about that line now. Yeah, there's no Phyrexian on life in, in the deck list. Yeah, I guess we're just going to continue to dredge the life from the loam. Alright, there's a Glacial Chasm, that's great. My opponent has one card. I have Wasteland to think about, and I have Days to think about. I'm gonna jam this into Days. Oh, it has one card. 
If it is days, this sucks. If it isn't days, this sets me up very well for later. Notably, Solemnity does interact with the artifacts that my opponent has in their deck. Joanne Pop, thank you very much for following. Yeah, this is uh, this is gonna be a fun one. Look, Solemnity, this is a better late than never situation for sure. I'm going to drag you over here to the side of the deck that doesn't do anything right now. Do I want to fetch first? Not really. What am I sacrificing? I probably don't need to deny my opponent mana via Rashadon port immediately. Well, welcome, Elemental. Glad to have you here. So and it, so the way cumulative upkeep works is you pay two life, at the beginning of your upkeep, put an age counter on this permanent, then sacrifice it unless you pay its upkeep cost for each age counter on it. Well, we can't put counters on that. So this is always just two life. Oh, oh, it's zero because uh, I see. That's even better than I thought it was. Now we're just going to... We're just gonna dredge. We found a port, and, or while well, the port was already in there, we found a Thespian stage. All right, we found a second life from the loam. I'm just going to go ahead and search, search up another green source just to have access to one. Oh yeah, Solemnity is sweet for sure. So now we're going to discard the other life from the loam. I, well, no. Undo? No undo. <clears throat> I want to dredge anyway. Ripple Cheap, thank you very much for your support, and now up to a year. Thank you for that, very much appreciated. And Sword Equip, thank you for 22 months of support. Captain's Log, Day 1000. We still have not found... Our source of salvation.
And Sword Equip, thank you very much for gifting a sub. I really do appreciate it. Hmm. I guess notably, if my opponent has the Paradigm Shift combo in their deck, I do need to, like, start hustling a little bit. Where is the Dark Depths? <laughs> now they're in the deck list. I saw them. God damn it. <laughs> That's really unfortunate. I called the shot. Like, I knew that was my opponent's out. But there wasn't anything I could do about it. The ley line of sanctity was already milled, and my enlightened tutors were off anyway, and we just didn't find a dark depths and 32 cards. So, for post sideboard games, back to basics is maybe one of the big things that I need to be worried about. I don't care too much about their critters. I can consider playing the choke. Does Leyline stop Thassa's Oracle? I think it does. But this is never wording that I've had to care about. No, it's win the game, right? It doesn't target like some of the older ones do. Yeah, if you win the game. Okay, so Leyline doesn't stop that. <clears throat> um, so, like, I can bring in some cards. I don't really know if I'm supposed to. I don't want the Ley Line of Sanctity. Most of the other stuff's fine. Like, Choke is... Okay, but the opponent is an Aether Vile deck, obviously, so it's not, it's not lights out. Like, Stony Silence and Cross and Grip technically do things. I guess having an out to Chalice is fine. I can maybe just trim one random mana source. Oh no, Bajuka Bug is a worse random mana source. Trim one random mana source for one of those. And... I don't actually think Wasteland is insane here. It'll do things sometimes, but my opponent's deck is going to have a good amount of basic lands. I get rid of this stop on my upkeep. I needed that when I was playing Delver. I'm not going to need that too much here. Uh... This hand is is going to go places if this exploration resolves. Oh, buddy.
So now my opponent's best opening play is Ether Vial. And if they don't have Ether Vial, I Vershaden part with them into Oblivion. I guess I just can start trying to run them out of basic lands. Maybe that doesn't make sense to start doing yet. Yeah, fine and Andy. And then, like, Loam hits Force of Negation, and I am dead? Like, I didn't see that line. There's a huge degree of risk associated with that if my opponent, like, chose not to get rid of Exploration for some weird reason. Am I getting surgical? Yeah, there's a thespian stage in the forest. No floating of mana, notably. You'll run out eventually. Yeah, opponents on fish. Specifically, they're on the combo version with Paradigm Shift. <clears throat> First land, maybe second land, be thinking about staging something, but I don't know that it's quite good yet. There will be the other Silver Gill Adept. Notably, I don't have a defensive land yet. I don't have a Glacial Chasm yet. All right, so I'm going to take six this turn. I 
I'm not going to take six this turn. They've held up something else. All right, there's a glacial chasm. Am I ready for that? Could be ready for that. All right, let's do it. Play my second land. Play a ghost quarter. I want to continue to thespian stage my opponent's lands. Or sorry, ghost quarter my opponent's lands. Mm, sure. Eh, maybe I don't. Maybe I just keep that land around to copy Glacial Chasm in upkeep. I'm down five minutes on clock, so I'm not gonna tank here and really figure that out. Zater Sith and Skyrim, thank you very much for following. Yeah, that, that could have been filed in in combat to deal two more damage to me last turn. That's the way it's gonna be, huh? Lock, lock down the board from all of the creatures, and then opponent assembles Paradigm Shift Thassa's Oracle both times. Like, that's okay, it happens, but it's a little frustrating. Say lovey. So. My opponent was last seen playing Oops All Spells. So, like, <laughs> am I supposed to keep this hand? I think I'm supposed to keep this hand because this hand is insane in a vacuum, and I don't know that we beat Oops ever anyway in game one. Please don't be oops. Please don't be oops. Fuck. <laughs> GG, well played. Oh, I don't really think Torpor Orb is a legit sideboard card. Teaser for something coming in the future, though. I am going to be playing a Hushbringer deck sometime in the next month. All right, let's do a quick check. Just make sure everything is available. There's the Thassa's Oracle. There is the Dread Return. We can concede. All right. How bad is this? <clears throat> we get Surgicals, we get Ancient Tomb, I guess we get Chalice on zero, and Sphere of Resistance and Stony Silence. Alright, um, this is all a touch questionable. They don't need Swords to Plowshares.
Bojugabog at instant speed is great. I don't need Glacial Chasms. I don't need Maze of Iths. Uh, don't really need Tabernacle either. That makes cutting that many makes my Mox Diamonds a little bit worse. Oh, JK, I need to keep one of those. <clears throat> I guess I'll keep the tabernacle. <clears throat> well, I guess that can make me pay a tax on my own Elvish flavors. I guess I'll keep a mace of it. Uh. I guess I could technically play ley lines, but I think I'm bringing in enough other stuff that I don't want that. This has Tutorable Bojuka Bog available on turn two that can't be interacted with via discard. I don't know if that's good enough. I'm gonna try to find something faster. It's so close! It's so close! All right, I'm gonna pitch Stony Silence because I'm gonna play a Chalice on zero. And I, I just don't think I'm ready for the Solemnity yet. I'm going to hold up Bojuka Bog on turn one. Once I have a second green source, I will be comfortable playing Elvish Reclaimer, but my opponent kept on seven. I don't know whether or not this stops them. If they just go like land, dark rit, idiot. I, I don't want to lose to that if I can play around that. I am Tom Newton. Thank you very much for following. Don't have the tabernacle. I could use to kill Wild Cantor, which would probably not be a good use of my turn. I don't think I can tap out for Elvish Reclaimer. I am scurred. This is a turn two through a chalice. Like it's not going to work because I have crop rotation for bog. But that's strong. Alright, uh, I guess I'll float my mana first. <sighs> like, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Thank you. 
That's a that's a little little disheartening. They turned two through two pieces of interaction. That's rough. Okay, we're paired against fan of the stream, the real kinda. And this hand is awkward. And that my Glacial Chasm is not a land that I'm going to want against whatever kinda is doing. They tend to play Curses or Amana Tau Miracles. And that's not good there. The same is true of Maze of Ith. And the fact that this land is tapped means that I can't just like play a quick Elvish Reclaimer. I think I'm going to toss this one back. This hand is much better. I'll keep this one and toss back the Maze. Wooded Foothills, huh? What are you doing, kinda? Oh wait, hold on. I mi I mixed up kinda and Reaple Cheap there for a second. <laughs> All right, it's it's Saturday morning. I got up an hour ago. Cut me a little slack. All right. Um, I don't remember what kinda has been mucking around with recently. They're a bit of a brewer. <clears throat> Am I holding up stuff for Wasteland? I'm kind of thinking something Mavericky, but no play in the first two turns is a little weird. I think what I'm going to do is play out two Elvish Reclaimers. And I have access to either Enlightened Tutor or Crop Rotation. Well, King, welcome. We're playing Legacy on this channel, and we're currently playing a green-white combo lands deck. I, I have no idea what my opponent is doing. <clears throat> I just holding up an Elvish Reclaimer. No, uh, I think I'm just going to jam this. My opponent has presented no no clock, no pressure. They haven't interacted with me yet. Let's set up this whole, like, Crucible of Worlds exploration thing and grind to victory from there. If you are a beginner, I recommend checking out MTG Arena. There's some free-to-play options there that can really teach you how the game works.
there is a pretty good tutorial there that I, I recommend highly if you are like brand new to the game. Um, Arena has some cool free to play options, but just know that magic in every capacity can be a real money sink. What? <laughs> All right. What else got revealed? Kinda. Kinda. The fuck is this? <laughs> so, are, am I tabernacling this out after destroying all of my opponent's lands? Is this the game plan? I can also source the plowshares it. Okay. I can also do Solemnity Glacial Chasm. Like, I can E-Tutor for Solemnity this turn. Draw it next turn. Then use Crop Rotation to get Glacial Chasm the following turn. My opponent's interaction suite is probably going to be weird. I, I don't feel like I'm dead immediately. I think I'm going to take a different line. Oh shit, that enters tapped. Uh, that wasn't the best line then. Forgot about that. Oh, whatever. That, that got me a land drop. That's actually fine. Now, next turn, I have four lands. Uh, I need another white source. Mm. Oh, wait, no, I don't. I'll just take this hit. Right Arbor is fine. Well, okay. The current plan for the Platinum Imperium is Enlighten Tutor or Solemnity now, play Solemnity on my turn, then Crop Rotation for Glacial Chasm. Hello, Moto? 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 Hello? Didn't like transforming that Planeswalker.
spatial chasm. All right, I, I am going to need to answer this eventually. But I think blowing up my opponent's lands now is good. I'm going to take them off their red for Blood Moon, because that's the big out in all likelihood to this current situation. Uh, it's, it's a Blood Moon in the revealed zone. Oh, right. So I should have done this post-combat so I could have poked that Garouk for one. My opponent played Madcap Experiment in order to get Platinum Empyrean. Um, things, what is this? Beginning of each player's pre-combat main phase, that player adds green-green. This card is, is, is spicy. Wow. Um. Okay. Right. Oh, I can just make the the merit lodge. But I think just grabbing a ghost quarter is really good. Hey, I think I just need to eliminate all of my opponent's lands. Well, I guess I Wasteland this turn. I could also get Tranquil Thicket, which is going to be pretty good with all this extra green mana. I guess I need a Loam first for that. Alright. Hondo percent... Let's blow up that land, that's easy. I don't know if I need to care about that. I guess I can't attack anyway. Ghost Order. Now, I'll play a Thespian Stage from Graveyard, and using the green mana my opponent gave me, I will copy the Ghost Quarter, so the next turn I can snag both of those basic lands. That's not bad. Kuji, thank you very much for following. Hope you're enjoying the content. Right, we gotta, we gotta always yield to these. Uh, one Mr. Lee, I can pretty much guarantee that our opponent will stop in the stream after this round, so don't you worry. We can, we can get you that list. <laughs> <laughs> My opponent is gonna get a fucking draw eight. <laughs> Holy spice piles, Batman. Fuck off, Ancestral Recall. <laughs> You've been replaced. <laughs> well, Kuji, welcome. Um, my YouTube channel, um, also ThrabenU or Thraben University, will get you there. Um, 
has a lot of really fun brews. Uh, we we play competitively. The uh, the channel is definitely educationally focused, and I'm a and I'm a rather skilled player. But the deck lists we're playing on stream are not the strongest things Legacy has to offer. Uh, this is definitely a donation deck list sort of channel. But glad to have you here. Uh, if you enjoy the range of decks that Modern has to offer, Legacy has that, but more. All right. Literally anything could come out here. <clears throat> Westing Beast. Does this have like a damage can't be prevented clause? <clears throat> Combat damage that would be dealt by creatures you control can't be prevented. All right, so I need to get Caracas. I can make a tapped Caracas. Fudge. Uh, <laughs> oh wait, hold on. Glacial Chasm stops them from attacking in the first place. No. Creatures you control, that's me, can't attack. Oh, uh, yeah, blow up my own stuff to get it untapped. That's strong. Okay, I like it. <laughs> uh. <clears throat> Excuse me. Excuse me. Um. <clears throat> well, we're gonna we're gonna make our first land drop here before I forget to do that. Oh yeah, we are Yu Gi Oh ing all over the place here. Please don't have two basic mountains and I get blood mooned because I did this. <clears throat> okay, good. They sandbagged another mountain in their deck. So be it. But this is this is what I need to do to eventually win. <clears throat> All right, they did not. Do I need this green mana? I don't know that I really need this green mana. Have another green mana in hand. <clears throat> I think I'm just going to take this opportunity to make a Merit Lodge and just have one around. This your life total can't change. What's the wording? Prevent all damage that would be done to you. All right. Let's just have that chill and in play. I will feel 
a bit safer if I don't just die immediately to a Platinum Empyrean attack when my opponent can do their thing. <clears throat> Also, like, damn, I want an exploration. I didn't really think my opponent was... Oh, no. Okay, well, good thing I made that Merit Lodge. Yeah, what are they supposed to take here? Is it just the Crucible? Alright, they're going for the Solemnity. <clears throat> That's fair. I'll take a little bit of damage from this Glacial Chasm, but I can just start a Thespian Stage, copy it, loop, after a turn or two. They had Night of Autumn before, why didn't they search that with the front side of Garuk? Oh yeah, I guess I can just, like, play land, play chasm, repeat that cycle. <clears throat> Their life total can't change. Ooh, hoo hoo. I really need to kill this scavenging ooze. <clears throat> All right. That Ghost Quarter is gone. How do I get rid of Platinum Empyrean now? Do I have outs to that? Do I need Tabernacle plus all their mana sources gone? Yes, I have to draw Swords to Plowshares. Okay. Not exactly great. Um, can't tap this Caracas because the questing beast in my opponent's hand. I guess that means I just play this out. Elder, the ugh, my opponent gets to eat so much of my graveyard here. This is no bueno. Like, my opponent can eat five cards out of the graveyard. That's all my relevant lands. <clears throat> I 
have another cycle land? No, I have one cycle land. I think I need to always yield to this ooze. My clock is running very low since I'm trying to beat this Platinum Empyrean. I think I'm going to end up cycling away my Glacial Chasm in this turn cycle and trying to spike swords to plowshares to win. I guess I can take four this turn and then do that next turn instead. My opponent has at least six basic lands. That's important knowledge for a future game. Yeah, like I'm... Oh, maybe... Hmm, maybe I do need to do it this turn then, because if I take four and go to one... I have two chump blockers versus three incoming damage. Yeah, maybe it is this turn or bust. <clears throat> um, yeah. All right. I could go for the Glacial Chasm line, but I think that leaves me dead on the backswing against another Garuk token. Take us Windswept Heath here. A fetch and Thin, look for that source to plowshares. Um, I think I'm going to pack it in here and respect my clock. I think I'm close enough to dead here. That I should just throw in the towel. This is a slippery slope towards me dying. It may take a turn or two, but I... I think I've used enough game one clock here. <clears throat> I can try to prolong things by, like, doing chump blocks for a couple of turns. But I think if I need to win the next two games, I I need to respect my clock a little bit. We used way too much trying to beat Platinum Empyrean. I also don't really think we have sideboard cards for this matchup. I guess I can bring in Cross and Grips for Blood Moons. <clears throat> I guess I can bring in Ancient Tomb. It'll probably be better than some other land. I don't really need Bojuka Bog. I am not pre prepared for the uh, Vineyard Garuk Tribal matchup. That is correct. Haze? Question mark? Haze seems kind of bad versus uh, 
like just swarm of wolf tokens. Like I want to have access to a maze for a large creature that gets in via madcap experiment, but I don't know that I want to. Yeah, and, and questing beast, but like Caracas answers that too. Uh sure. No colored mana. No colored mana. Port may seem weak versus vineyard, but I need to keep port in the deck as a mana source. And they're not always going to have it, right? My opponent's deck is full of clunky, high-costed cards, so the times where they don't have acceleration, port can be pretty good. <clears throat> oh, I just hit keep. L. Um, we're going to spike a green source and everything will be fine, maybe. I looked over at chat and uh, did a dumb. My opponent is going to play a vineyard and everything's going to be great. Don't worry. Alright, so play Wasteland, load a colorless mana, ghost quarter it, get forest, have two mana, cast life from the loam. That gets me out of this. Next turn, I get exploration into two lands, and then hopefully I just go ham with life from the loam. Next turn, I'll probably play Elvish Reclaimer. At some point, I can try to dredge and turn it into a big, big. Ender Vines. Am I going to lose exploration? Maybe not. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty good. We'll wait on that. Once my opponent has used the Cinder Vines, I can get white mana.
So maybe I just need to get white mana now. Let's just answer that. I'm going to preemptively put a Dark Depths into play. That way, if I draw a Croson Grip or the Blood Moon, I have Marilage. You don't pay me enough to get the sneeze sounds. You have to get those on the OnlyFans. I could cast that life from the loan to make another land drop, but I think I'm just going to let this hang out in my hand. <clears throat> the colorless mana isn't really doing me a lot right now. I'll cast the life from the loam if I need to make... Uh... Ooh, buddy, that's a lot of clock. Oop, boop, 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 boop. I have to cycle that in my opponent's turn. Cycle that in my opponent's turn. Crop rotation not doing me much good right now. I think we're dead. <clears throat> As I draw Cross and Grip, Cross and Grip, Blood Moon, block Questing Beast, take three and be exactly dead. Yep. GG's. Blood Moon strong against the lands deck. Um, okay. What does this hand do? Hand has two non-mana producing lands, which is kind of bad. So I have Enlightened Tutor for Solemnity, and then I have Dark Depths, but I don't have the mana to play Solemnity. Solemnity costs three. I could crop rot Maze of Ith into Thespian Stage instead. That's kind of slow. I think I'm going to mulligan this one. <clears throat> <laughs> what? <laughs> like... Really? What did I deserve? <laughs> what did I do to deserve this? All right. Well, I keep four of these. <clears throat> That's these four. Ox Diamond, Discard, Dark Depths, GQ, Life from the Loam. Can't keep an exploration.
force of negation. All right, didn't happen. All right, the, the good news is that as long as our life from the loam isn't a total scumbag, we can maybe do some cool things here. As far as a mult of four goes, that's pretty good. Why are you even joking about the force here? Because it's really funny when you call the disaster shots. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> At least I'm not getting wastelanded and then just, like, sitting here awkwardly for a while. <sighs> Fucking Thassa's Oracle! Again? Okay. Like, I can Ghost Quarter them off of black, and then I can't cast my own life from the loam. Okay, let's go. All right, I, I, I think even I can win with, like, two mana and casting a Doomsday. Uh, oh. <clears throat> they need to, uh, they need to adjust. Uh, um, I think Dark Poet Bill's mom was calling and the Hot Pockets were done. Okay. Mox Diamond, Discard Dark Depths, Wasteland, Life from the Loam. Have two tutors to back it up. I will keep this. Humans. All right. Do I care about that mother of runes? Because I can surge the plowshares it now, or I can surge the plowshares most of their creatures never. Box diamond, discard dark depths is a hundred percent happening. I'm gonna start there. I can just wasteland them and sorts the plowshares them this turn. I think that's too good to pass up. <clears throat> but I think that if I couldn't wasteland them that turn, I would have ignored the mom and just started on my primary game plan instead. I play Windswept Heath and pass. I believe that I will be going Enlightened Tutor or Solemnity. Play Solemnity and then Dark Depths.
Why not get the thespians? Why why get the thespians? Well, I guess the thespian stage is recurrable. But my dark depths plus solemnity is also recurrable. Solemnity also stops ether vial. I think this is potato potato where both are insane. Damn it, the thumbnail for this has solemnity on it, and we're gonna use it. Alright, now we need to not dredge over our solemnity. All right, are you a version of humans that has swords to plowshares? Because if no... All right, do I even want that life from the loam this turn? This turn I wasteland you. I can cast life from the realm, get back. Dark Depths, not play Dark Depths. Um... I probably just want a crop rotation this turn. Wasteland, Caracas, crop rotation. New Dark Depths. I don't think I want to loan this turn. Okay. I don't think I need to grab a mom in combat. Also, straight up, are we playing against death and taxes? Because my opponent has so many planes. I don't think I want that. I already have a Dark Depths in hand. Like, the Cavern of Souls and Windswept Heath may be for, like, a DNT splash build rather than actual humans. Opponent's draw was certainly weird. William, thank you very much for following. Um... Regardless, I don't know that we actually sideboard all that much for this matchup. Like, Joni Silence and Chris and Grip are the only things that I really need to be thinking about. I don't want this Ley Line. I don't want this Bojuka Bog. The rest of this stuff is all fine. <clears throat> Do I play an Ancient Tomb?
Do I play one Stony Silence as an E-Tutor target? Like, if we're playing against Death and Taxes, the Stony Silence is better than not. And if we're playing against humans, that is, for some reason, playing triple planes. Stony Silence is only eh. Let's board in two Stony Silence, and if our opponent is on humans, we'll go back down to one and then play the Ancient Tomb. Yes, the Hackbird. It falls into the category of odd, but not unprecedented. Don't think this hand is capable. The tapped green source is rough. Stand as a life from the loam. I'll keep it. <clears throat> what don't I want? E tutor? Probably E tutor. Um, the league's not going great, but it's a lot of fun, so it's going great. You know? Alright. We'll play Savannah and pass. Then we can crop rotation if we get wastelanded. And Andy, thank you for your continued support. All right, so our opponent probably grabs Batter Skull, at which point I'll sort of plowshares. Stoneforge Mystic. I'll still Stoneforge, or this is getting plowed now. I, I just want to operate under maximum mana efficiency here. My mana's tight right now and will probably continue to be tight. <clears throat> um, do I want to wasteland my opponent? I think so. He didn't have a turn one play. I still hold up a crop rotation for my own wasteland. This makes my life from the loam in the future better. Thalia is a beating for me, but my opponent would have played that over Stoneforge last turn. Um, that's not great for me either. All right. Alright, I'll turn Tabernacle into a mana-producing land with crop rotation. Then I'll play Solemnity. Then I'll use the other crop rotation to get Dark Depths. Yeah, fine, Andy, I agree. Why is my opponent playing that many cavernous souls? JK, I figured it out. Alright, how many ways do I have to remove that Magus? Or the plowshares, which is going to be really hard to cast. Uh, there needs to be a basic planes in this deck. For sure. But now I need to assemble Mox Diamond plus land plus source of plowshares to take that off the table.
We're pretty dead. But we have a lot of time, unless my opponent plays another good threat. This can't be bigger than that, um, but playing this is still worth it as a chump blocker. Yeah, I, I think getting rid of Chasm number two for a planes is a good call. All right, there's half of the equation. The issue is that my opponent has Caracas. So even if I make my Marilage, they just bounce it. And then Thalia plus Sword probably kills me. Uh, if that name is Mox Diamond, I have zero outs. Okay, now we know what's going on. My opponent is Red Splash DNT. So I think I'm going to ignore their vials and play Cross and Grips. I also think I want Ancient Tomb. Ancient Tomb to help power out these things. Uh, maybe maybe that's too much because I have to take out some reasonable mana producing land. Yeah, maybe that's not actually reasonable. Doesn't quite have enough mana to do what I want. I have to discard one of these lands to Mox Diamond, so I really only have two mana towards Solemnity. Um, this is a reasonable but unexciting hand. Keep this. Get rid of E Tutor. Done. Go Verdant. Crack. Let's get the basic. Let's go Mox Diamond. Discard Savannah. Play Elvish Reclaimer. Um, not the perfect time for exploration. If I boarded in the ancient tomb, I have the combo here, right? Crop rotation. Oh, wait, no. Crop rotation is plus one mana. I guess I can play the Exploration. It still holds up two mana for Elvish Reclaimer activations. I can't hold up that plus crop rotation. Yeah, maybe I don't. The Exploration is, well, not a dead card. Not particularly strong currently.
good with getting rid of the forest. I think the play that it probably sparks is good. Wasteland me. Oh yeah, just one. I almost never do more than one league in a stream. I try to keep healthy personal life, yikes, um, streaming life balance. And I think running a whole bunch of leagues in a day doesn't do anyone any good. That's brutal. Yeah, when it, whenever people donate for them, I play them. This is this is just not good. Let's assume that the plan has changed now. <clears throat> Liquor Wisp, your Mox Diamond, take you off green. Get wrecked. Um, there's no commonly played three, two drop with four power here, so... You have the Jotun Grunt, you have the Jotun Grunt, but I'm going to take this damage. I cannot catch a fucking break here. Good god. Also, I really think the opponent was supposed to take me off the Mox Diamond because that was my only showing colored source. My opponent just punted in a way that worked out very well for them. Okay, why are we doing that now? Are you grabbing Revoker? Revoke Mox Diamond. Alright. We're done. Okay. Um... How bad is the mana in this deck? Because the mana seemed atrocious. Let's take a look at this. Yeah. Yeah, the mana in this deck is bad. So, counting Mox Diamond fully as, as sources, which isn't quite true, especially on mulligans.
the deck has 12 colored mana sources, one of which enters tapped, and three of which require a second card. I bet this deck list is just trying to get too greedy with all of these colored sources. Um, I don't know regular lands well enough to know how much greedier this is than traditional lands, but traditional lands um, in particular often has trouble getting their secondary color. And it just feels like with, with Wasteland and Port and Stage and Chasm and multiple mazes that there there's just too many things in this colorless column here. And I mulliganed a lot of hands because I did not have access to either one or both of my primary colors. So I think the very first thing I would do in retooling this deck list is probably remove one of these, remove one of these, and maybe even remove one of those too to just get three more colored sources in here. Uh, we, we lost a lot of games due to not being able to cast my own spells. I also don't necessarily think the one of Leyline of Sanctity in the main deck is going to be better than, say, the fourth copy of Exploration or something of that general nature. Like, this, this is a cool card to have access to, but I don't know that it needs to be in the main deck. Um... Despite all these tutors, this deck felt wildly inconsistent, and I'm guessing the mana base was the biggest reason for that. Now, granted, I don't think we're beating Death and Taxes most of the time. Like, Death, Death and Taxes is very good versus Merit Lodge decks. It's not specifically built to bully them, but when you have Wasteland and Port and, and Flicker Wisp, like, you, you have so many tools to stop a Merit Lodge. In addition, our opponent also had, like, Blood Moons on a stick. That was very good for them. Um, but I don't know how good the Solemnity actually was. Uh, something that happened a couple of times, I didn't really talk about it, but something that I noticed is there's plenty of times where you draw, like, a Solemnity and an Enlightened Tutor, and then, like, what is it your Enlightened Tutor supposed to get? Like, once you have drawn a Solemnity, the Enlightened, the next Enlightened Tutor is significantly worse, because Enlightened Tutor doesn't fetch both sides of the combo. So crop rotation can fetch stage or depths. That's both sides of the combo. Enlightened Tutor can only find Solemnity. So that's another thing that I noticed over the course of this league. Um, this this deck was fun, uh, but like we did not fire on all cylinders this league. Yeah, so fine and Andy, the the game where we had a Solemnity in play and then like just recurred dark depths for a single land drop three times in a row. Like, that was very good. That was very fast. We could have done the same thing if we cast uh, Crop Rotation instead and got the stage, but that's much slower and requires more of a mana investment. So the Solemnity thing was cool, but not great. So the other thing that comes to, lot to mind with this is uh, a combo that sees play in a decent amount of Historic, and that's Nine Lives. Nine lives plus Solemnity would be fine. Like, you take nine lives as another way to make your Enlightened Tutor better. So say you take out the Ley Line and put in nine lives. Then when you Enlightened Tutor, if you already have Solemnity, you can grab nine lives, and then your Enlightened Tutor can finish a lock. You think Knight is more stable than the White Tutor. Yeah, and Knight of the Reliquary could just give you another way to just, like, beat face and win a game with a standalone card. Uh, yes, the white, white pips of nine lives would not be easy. Uh, I did just get done finishing, <laughs> complaining about the mana base a little bit here, so I do agree with that. Um, as far as the sideboard goes, I don't know how good this sideboard is. Like, I don't know if Leyline of Sanctity is worth doing in this format. Like, if you if you take a quick think, what deck plays Leyline of Sanctity? Right. None of them? 
So I, I get that Leyline of Sanctity can solve very specific problems of edicts with this deck, but is that better than just trying to try again and being able to have other sideboard hate? Because I didn't sideboard too much in most of my rounds, right? I, I, I just don't feel like I have any generically good sideboard cards that I can board in when some of my main deck stuff, like, say, Bojukabog or Tabernacle or Maze of Ith, aren't particularly good. Okay, we, we debriefed that one pretty, pretty hard. I hope that has given you all some things to think about in terms of, of deck building. All right, for those of you watching on the YouTube end, if you made it this far, you know, please like, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications for posts, that sort of stuff uh, really helps out with my analytics a lot, and the analytics have been looking great, so I really do appreciate that. And if you're really enjoying the, um, the content, please consider doing a donation deck list and getting something else spicy on this channel. Have a great rest of the day, YouTube folks.